Hello, I'm Dan Klingman with the Link Electric Weld School, and we just got done making several different welds, some uh, lap joints, some T-joints, and some fillet welds, and also some groove welds. Now we finished those welds, but how do we now determine where do we need improvement at, and how do we determine whether those welds are acceptable? There's a couple general criteria that we can use to, to look at the welds and determine where we need to improve at. There's a lot of different types of what we call non-destructive testing, where we can still uh, test the part, but it'll, it can then still be put into service. One of the most common types of non-destructive testing is the visual inspection. So when we look at visual inspection, we're going to take a particular joint, and we'll use this uh, T-joint here to start with, and we're going to look at it, and there's a couple different parts of the weld that we should be familiar with. On this particular weld, We've got a toe of our weld here and a toe of our weld here. The part across the middle is what we refer to as the face of the weld. So when we look at this particular one and we want a flat face, you want that area from here to here to be relatively flat. The, the alternative would be to have a concave weld. Concave welds can be more susceptible to cracking than say a flat or even a convex weld which would be slightly uh, humped up in the middle. So we're looking for a flat face as, as the key. The other criteria that we're going to look at is proper placement in the joint. You know, obviously we want the weld to be in the joint. We don't want to be straying out of the joint. And I've got an example here of a lap, uh, lap joint. And we've got a, a fillet weld on here. And if you look right at the beginning, it's actually more on the bottom plate than the top plate. That's what we're referring to as proper placement. So you can see as we started the weld, we noticed we were on the bottom and then came back into the joint and proceeded uh, down the weld. So again, making sure the weld is where you want it and it's properly placed is also a key uh, criteria to look for in your welds. The other one, is what we call, you're looking for the weld to be fairly uniform. And by fairly uniform, we mean nice and straight, and also, you know, you don't have places where it's wide and narrow, wide and narrow. So for example, we built the pad earlier, or when you build a pad, the idea behind that is to get consistent with number one, keeping a straight line, and number two, making sure that they're consistent in width as you proceed down the pad. So, a uh, fairly uniform weld is also an important uh, criteria to look for when welding. And one of the last ones that we look at is the wash-in. And we'll, we'll select this one here. This is a lap joint. But when we, when we refer to wash-in, if we go back and we look at the toes of the weld that we talked about, we want the transition at the toe of the welds to blend in smoothly with the base material. What happens is if, it's, if, it, if it doesn't transition smoothly or have good wash-in, you could possibly get a stress riser there. And one of the examples that we commonly use for a stress riser uh, to simulate this would be if you take a piece of string and, and you pull on it and it, it's hard to break, well if you go and you put a knot into it, like for fishing line or something, and you then pull on it, you'll notice that that fishing line a lot of times will break right there where that stress riser was. Same thing in our weld here. We want it to transition smooth and have a nice wash in with our base material in these particular areas at the toes. So as a summary, just to wrap up here what we've talked about, there's four general areas that we can focus on for visually inspecting a weld. One of them would be a flat face. One of them would be proper placement in the joint. One is fairly uniform, being the weld consistently shaped down the joint. And the last one is good washing uh, at the toes of the weld. So if you're looking for any other information on welding, you can visit linkelectric.com.